Hey, everyone. I'm Sarah, a 28-year-old single mom just trying to make it through each day. I live in a small apartment with my adorable two-year-old daughter, Lily. She's the center of my world, but being a single parent, it's no walk in the park. I'm working hard as a waitress, barely making ends meet, but for that little munchkin, I do anything. Then there's my older sister, Jessica. She seems to have it all together. Fancy lawyer job, a big house, and her husband, Mark, who looks like he's straight out of a rom-com, I'd be lying if I said I didn't feel like a mess when I compare my life to her sometimes. Sarah, how are you holding up? Jessica asks one afternoon when she drops by my place. She's perfectly polished in her designer suit, every hair in place, while I'm elbow deep in dirty dishes with Lily clinging to my leg. Oh, you know, living the dream. I laugh, trying to sound more cheerful than I feel. Jessica gives me that look, a mix of pity and concern. Why don't I take Lily for the weekend? She offers. You could pick up a few extra shifts, maybe get some time for yourself. I hesitate. I hate asking for help, but the extra money would be a blessing. Are you sure? I don't want to be a burden. Don't be ridiculous. Mark and I love having her over. It'll be fun. Jessica insists, already picking up Lily, who giggles and plants a big, wet kiss on her aunt's cheek. Thanks, Jess. You're a lifesaver, I say, feeling a wave of gratitude wash over me. Sure, Jessica's life seems perfect, but she's always been there for me. As she packs Lily's things, Jessica turns to me. Hey, can I borrow your phone charger? Mine's been acting up. Yeah, no problem. It's in my purse on the kitchen table. Help yourself, I call out as I try to wrestle Lily into her jacket. I hear Jessica rummaging through my bag, and a small voice in the back of my mind says it's strange she didn't wait for me to get it for her. But I shrug it off. She's my sister, after all. Later, after they've left, I collapse onto the couch, relishing the rare quiet. I should probably be cleaning or prepping meals, but instead, I start scrolling through Jessica's social media. Vacation pictures, work milestones, sweet posts with Mark. It's like a highlight reel of the perfect life. I let out a sigh, trying to push away the envy bubbling inside. Get it together, Sarah, I mutter. Jessica's worked hard for everything she has, and she's always there for me and Lily. I shouldn't feel jealous. Just then, my phone pings. It's a text from Jessica. Lily's having a blast. Don't work too hard this weekend, sis. Love you both. I smile, feeling a whirlwind of emotions. Grateful for her help, missing my baby girl, and yeah, still a little envious. But mostly, I'm just thankful to have Jessica in my life. A week goes by, and I finally start tackling the chaos that is my apartment. Toys are scattered everywhere, and the laundry could easily clothe a small village. As I'm shoving things into closets, don't judge, I notice Jessica's designer purse on the coffee table. How did I not see that earlier? I better get this back to her before she freaks out, I mumble, grabbing the purse. It's probably worth more than everything in my closet combined. But as I pick it up, it slips from my hands, spilling everything onto the floor. Oh, come on, I groan bending down to gather the mess. That's when I spot them, a pile of official looking papers. Curiosity gets the best of me and I take a quick peek. My heart stops. These are adoption papers with Lily's name on them. What the? My hands tremble as I scan the documents. Jessica and Mark's names are listed as the adoptive parents. This can't be real. It has to be some kind of mistake, right? What is going on? I whisper, my mind racing. Why would Jessica have adoption papers for my daughter? Then it hits me hard. My sister, the person I trusted most in the world, is trying to take my baby from me. The room spins, and I sit down before I collapse. No, 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 I mutter, frantically searching through her purse for some explanation. Anything I'm missing, what I find next only deepens the betrayal. There's a birth certificate, a fake one, with Jessica listed as Lily's mother forged medical records, and a plane ticket to another state. Each discovery feels like another stab in the heart. I can't breathe. I can't think. How could Jessica do this? To me, to Lily, we're family. Suddenly, my phone buzzes, and I nearly jump. It's a text from Jessica. 
Hey, sis. Forgot my purse at your place. Can you bring it by later? I stare at the message, my stomach churning. What do I even say? Sure, no problem. By the way, I found your secret plan to kidnap my daughter. Another text comes through. Also, Mark and I were thinking of taking Lily for another weekend soon. Give you a break, you know? Rage bubbles up inside me. A break? More like giving them another chance to disappear with my child. I sink to the floor, surrounded by the evidence of Jessica's betrayal, and let out a sob. What am I going to do? How do I protect Lily? Who can I trust? One thing is certain. I'm not letting anyone take my daughter. Not Jessica. Not anyone. I may be struggling, but Lily is my entire world. I'll do whatever it takes to keep her safe. I take a shaky breath, trying to pull myself together. I need a plan. I need help. But most of all, I need to act normal and keep Lily close until I figure out my next move. With trembling hands, I gather all the documents and shove them back into Jessica's purse. I'll have to pretend I never saw them, at least for now. But nothing will ever be the same. Later, I'm sitting on my friend Maya's couch, spilling everything about what I found in Jessica's purse. Maya has been my ride or die since high school, and right now, she's the only person I can trust. Girl, this is seriously messed up, Maya says, shaking her head. We need to dig deeper. Something's not adding up. We start piecing things together, and what we uncover is disturbing. Maya pulls out her laptop and scrolls through Jessica's social media. Wait a second, Maya says, pointing at the screen. Didn't you say Jessica couldn't have kids? I lean in, my jaw practically hitting the floor. There's Jessica, showing off what looks like a baby bump in her latest posts. What the- I mutter. She had told everyone she was pregnant. We keep scrolling, finding post after post about doctor's appointments and getting the nursery ready. It's all fake, but Jessica sold the lie perfectly. She's been planning this for months, I whisper, feeling a wave of nausea wash over me. Maya grabs my hand. We need to get into her email. You still know her password, right? I nod, feeling guilty, but knowing we don't have a choice. We log in, and what we find sends chills down my spine. There are emails to a shady lawyer about fast-tracking and adoption across state lines. The responses are vague, but it's clear something illegal is going on. Oh my god, I whisper as we scroll through message after message. Maya's eyes widen as she reads over my shoulder. Look at this one from Mark. The email lays out their entire plan, taking Lily and vanishing, using false claims of substance abuse to paint me as an unfit mother. They actually believe Lily would be better off without me. Substance abuse? Maya asks, confused. What are they talking about? You barely even drink. I don't know, I say, shaking my head, baffled. As we dig deeper, things get worse. Jessica's been isolating me from friends and family for months, always coming up with some excuse as to why I couldn't attend events or why people shouldn't visit. Remember when she told you your cousin Amy was talking trash about you? Maya says, bet that was a lie too. I nod, feeling like an idiot for falling for all of it. Even the financial help Jessica had been offering was part of her scheme, keeping me reliant on her. But the worst part is yet to come. We uncover a string of messages between Jessica and some guy about getting small doses of drugs. At first, I'm confused, but then the realization hits me. Oh my God, I gasp, my stomach turning. She's been drugging me. That's why I've felt so off lately. She's been putting something in my food. Maya's eyes go wide with horror. She's setting you up to make it look like you're an addict. That's how she plans to take Lily. The room feels like it's closing in on me as the full extent of Jessica's betrayal sinks in. My own sister has been poisoning me, isolating me, all so she could steal my daughter. What am I going to do? I ask, feeling more terrified and alone than ever. They have money connections. I'm just a waitress. How do I even fight this? Maya grabs my shoulders, forcing me to look at her. Listen to me. You are not alone. We've got evidence now. We're going to fight this, and we're going to win. I take a deep breath, trying to steady myself. Maya's right. I can't fall apart now. Lily needs me to be strong. Okay, I say, wiping away the tears I didn't even realize I'd shed. What's our next moves? 
Maya grins, a determined glint in her eyes. Now? Now we set a trap. We're going to catch these snakes red-handed. As we start planning, I feel a spark of hope. Jessica may think she has everything under control, but she has no idea who she's dealing with. I'm a mom, and I'll do whatever it takes to protect my daughter. Watch out, sis. You've messed with the wrong mama bear. Later, I'm pacing my apartment, torn between wanting to confront Jessica immediately and knowing I need to play it smart. Maya's been a lifesaver, helping me gather evidence and even connecting me with her cousin, who's a lawyer. We need to catch her in the act, Maya insists, setting up hidden cameras around my place. It can't just be your word against hers. I nod, my stomach churning when Jessica calls, offering to babysit again. I force myself to sound normal. That'd be great. Thanks, sis. When she arrives, I kiss Lily goodbye, silently praying it's the last time I have to leave her with that snake. Hours later, Maya and I huddle over her laptop, watching the footage. My blood boils as we see Jessica going through my things, making a call in hushed tones. It's all set for next week, she whispers into the phone. Sarah has no idea. I clench my fists, barely containing the urge to confront her right then and there. But I know we need more. The next day, I invite Jessica over for coffee, secretly recording the entire conversation on my phone. We chat casually until I drop the bomb. Hey Jess, you know that bag of old clothes in my closet? I was thinking of donating them to that shelter for moms escaping abusive situations. Jessica stiffens. Oh, I don't think that's a good idea, she says quickly. Those places are full of unstable people, drug addicts mostly. I press further, and Jessica takes the bait, launching into a rant about how women like that are unfit mothers and how their kids would be better off adopted by stable families. It takes everything in me not to scream at her, but with this, we finally have enough. The trap is set. I invite Jessica, Mark, and a few family members over for dinner. My hands shake as I set the table, but I'm ready. As everyone digs into dessert, I clear my throat. I have something I need to share with all of you. My voice shakes, but I push through, laying it all out, adoption papers, the fake pregnancy, the poisoning. I play the recordings, and the room erupts into chaos. Jessica jumps to her feet, her face drained of color. She's lying. Sarah's unstable. She's on drugs. But Mark's face tells a different story. Jessica, what have you done? He whispers, horrified. Turns out, she had been manipulating him too, feeding him lies about my so-called drug habit. He had no clue about the forged documents or the poisoning. As the truth sinks in, Jessica unravels completely. It's not fair, she screams. I deserve that baby more than her. Unsuccessful, unstable. Why should she get to have a child when I can't? Everyone watches in stunned silence as Jessica's jealousy and bitterness pour out. It's like I'm seeing a stranger wear my sister's face. The police arrive, and Jessica is dragged away, kicking and screaming. I collapse into Maya's arms, drained but relieved. The next few weeks blur by in a whirlwind of police statements and court dates. I file a restraining order against Jessica, who now faces a long list of charges. Slowly, I begin to rebuild my life. Family and old friends reach out, apologizing for believing Jessica's lies. It's tough, but I'm working on forgiving them. Months later, I'm at the park, pushing Lily on the swings, finally feeling like we can breathe again. Maya is nearby, keeping a watchful eye as usual. Higher, Mama. Lily squeals, and I laugh, giving her another push toward the sky. As I watch her soar, I think about everything we've endured. It's been hell, but we made it through. Jessica's toxic presence is gone, and for the first time in a long while, I feel hopeful about the future. My life might not be perfect, and I certainly don't have all the answers, but I have my daughter, true friends, and a strength I didn't know I had. And honestly, that's more than enough. So now, the story's over, but I've got a question for you. If you were in my shoes, could you ever forgive Jessica? Or are some betrayals just too deep to come back from? Drop your thoughts in the comments. I'm really curious what you do.